Hi friends, how are you? It's me, I'm in Austin, Texas for South by Southwest, which is very exciting. We're being joined by Dr. Hillary Marston. Hi, Dr. Marston, how are you? Hello, doing just fine. Thanks so much for inviting me. Oh no, thank you so much for, um, for, for being here and for talking to us about this because it is so important and it has the potential to really start saving lives and to, to let women know, as I mentioned before you popped on, Dr. Marston, that 45% of women 40 and over have dense breasts. And I know 38 states, someone just said that it was happening in California, 38 states already inform patients, but I know they do it in various ways. Is the sound not good, you all? I'm sorry, is this sound okay, you guys? I'm gonna hold this up. Um, but they don't have specific language. They don't really instruct uh, a lot of patients in terms of what they need to do. So it varies from state to state. So tell me what this new um, policy is going to do and what it's going to require states, states to do. I'm gonna hold this up because I think I'm blocking my mic a bit. Sorry, this is very, uh, you know, <laughs> it's not super fancy the way we do these, Dr. Marston. This is great. This is great. Thanks so much. So listen, the FDA, among the many different things that it regulates, we regulate the standards for mammography across the country. And so that means that we do two different things. So number one, we set standards for what a quality mammogram means. And number two, we inspect the facilities. And that means that if a woman goes to a facility, gets her mammogram, as we recommend that everyone go and do, uh, they are going to be assured that they're getting a quality product. So under this new rule that we just issued, what we're now requiring is that each mammogram facility in the mammogram report actually tells a clinician about the density of a woman's breasts. So as you mentioned, more than half of states across the country were already requiring this, but we're doing two things. Number one, we're making sure that that's uniform across the country. So everybody gets access to this information. Right. Number two, we're making sure that it's in lay language, right? And we're actually giving the type of language that should be used in these reports. So it can both be understood by the clinician for sure, but also we're arming women directly with the information that they need to advance their own health. Yeah, and, and I, I know that, as I said, uh, 38 states required this, but um, you know they, they weren't specific enough. So now there's very specific language that must be given to every woman who gets a mammogram about their breast, den uh, breast density, right? That's exactly right. Now, this policy, it was first, uh, I guess, being considered, I don't know really the language for the FDA, Dr. Marston, but it first came up in 2019. Mm -hmm. And so I guess the question is, what took so long? I mean, now it's been four years. I know you all had a lot to deal with. On the other hand, it seems like a long time. And maybe you can explain, Dr. Marston, the, the public comment period and what you have to do regarding a change in policy, which is very bureaucratic, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I would make this uh, as, uh, as interesting as possible for folks, because you're right, it is quite, quite bureaucratic. So the first thing to emphasize here is that we have been overseeing quality mammography since a law was passed back in 1992. Right, so we've had rules in place for this in the past. There, it wasn't like there was nothing out there, but we wanted to update the rules because mammography technology has advanced and the things that we know about women's breasts and, and about, uh, about risk factors for cancer, including critically the density of women's breasts, that science has advanced. So we needed to catch up, right? So we wanted to issue that final, the, the, a rule that would update our regulations for what those standards are. In the middle of 2019, we opened it up for public comment. So this is something the FDA takes very seriously. We post these things on the web before they're final. And we got 150 different comments on 400 different uh, very substantive issues. So we were going through each of those, taking them very seriously. Remember I said middle of 2019, a little something happened a little bit later, uh, six months later, the COVID pandemic, obviously, and that was an all hands on deck situation for, for the FDA, like it was so many different government agencies. So while we were continuing to work through those comments, uh, folks were also all hands on deck on COVID. So it did take a little bit longer, 
than we would have necessarily wanted, but we uh, worked as diligently as we could. Let's talk about sort of, um, by the way, if anyone has questions, I took off the comments because they covered Dr. Marston's face and can be distracting, but please, if you have any questions for Dr. Marston, please put them in the question section of this conversation. All right, well, you know, this is the problem though, Dr. Marston, as I'm sure you know. Um, first of all, women with dense breasts, they, it's indicated by a mammogram. They're told you have dense breasts and what that may mean is they need additional screening because as you know, Dr. Marston, when there's an abnormality and there's dense breast tissue, it's sometimes hard to determine um, on a mammogram, even 3D mammograms sometimes need additional screening. So I guess the problem is, and that I found, because I have dense breasts, like 45% of women 40 and over, is that insurance, insurance doesn't cover additional screening. And I know that's probably not under the FDA's purview, but how do we get more insurance companies to cover this additional screening because it shouldn't just be available to women who can you know pay out of pocket for this yeah look, look i think that this is a very important issue uh, as as you mentioned the fda uh, doesn't really regulate payment policy but that doesn't mean that it's any less important right uh, so what we're doing here with this new rule is setting the standard and really recognizing the importance of this issue of breast density nationwide across the country. So every woman has access to that information. But it's also a signal that this is a critical piece of public health information and a critical element of what it means to take charge of your own health, right? So it's one part of what's needed here, uh, but it's an, an important part. I also think that, you know, just coming back to the broader issue here, this is a great opportunity to emphasize the importance of everyone going out and getting their mammograms, getting them early, and hopefully catching those, if there is, God forbid, a, a cancer on there, catching it in its local state when the survivability is as high as possible. So over 99% five-year survival if it's localized, which I realize you know. Yeah, I do know that because uh, everybody, we're, we're talking to Dr. Hillary Marston, who's the chief medical, operate, uh, chief medical officer of the Food and Drug Administration, which announced yesterday that they were going to require all states to inform women that if they have dense breasts with very specific language that is sort of uh, gives them, I guess, well, maybe we should talk about that specific language, Dr. Marston. Does it tell them... A, you have dense breasts. I know there are four categories of density for women. Do you, do you need to know how dense you are on the spectrum of breast density? And are, are then um, patients going to be told what else should be done for them? Yeah, so we're, we're requiring two types of information. So there's the information that goes to the clinician, which will have more detail on those different categories, right? And then there's the information that goes to the patient, which is you have dense breasts and you might wanna discuss this with your clinician. So what we're doing there is teeing up that conversation so that you can decide what's next for your screening, right? And that can depend on your individual risk factors, um, your tolerance for additional testing, et cetera. So it really is an important individualized conversation. As you know, those options can differ from watchful waiting from changing uh, the, the speed at which you're going to get your next mammogram or different imaging cho choices, for example, breast ultrasound, MRI. So there's a lot of different options here, but it needs to be that individualized conversation. We got a lot of questions from, from viewers and from my followers, Dr. Marston, asking if someone with dense breasts should get a mammogram and an ultrasound routinely for their annual checkups. Now, you know, I have been doing that for many years just because I do have dense breasts, which by the way, everyone, I just wanna remind people, breast density is indicated on a mammogram. It's not like you can determine for yourself how dense your breasts are, fibrocystic your breasts are. You, breasts are. You, have to, you have to get a mammogram to determine that. I just wanted to point that out. That's correct, Dr. Marston. I'm not giving actually, yes. Right. But um, so I guess the question is, 
should people be getting both of those tests like I have for, for many years? Um, and of course, again, that brings up the access and affordability issue. But if, you know, can doctors help women get their insurance companies to pay for it? Do you think this will lead the way, given the fact that you're kind of, um, you know, changing the policy and this is a real, uh, you know, an important consideration? Do you think this will pave the way for more insurance coverage? for these secondary screenings? Well, I certainly think that it's a signal that the FDA believes that this is a critical piece of information for women to have about their health. What insurance companies choose to do with that uh, is a little bit, is a more complicated uh, matter, right? And um, beyond the purview of the FDA. But what we are able to say is that women need this information and that it is fundamental to this critical element of, of healthcare. And I think there are other government agencies. For example, there's the U.S. Preventative Health Task Force. Did I get that right? Preventative Services Health Task Force, yeah. Of course, I forgot one of the words. The U.S. Preventative Services Health Task Force. And they're the ones that often provide the guidelines. So I think they are actually looking at this issue um, and may, if they say women with dense breasts need additional screening, then that really is a signal that insurance companies will have to sit up and take notice, right? If, if this U.S. preventative services, whatever, blah, 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 if they say you need more screening if you have dense breasts, do you think that does mean insurance will, will then start to cover it? Yeah, so it depends on the strength of the recommendation there, right? So if it's a level A recommendation that has a lot more meaning, a lot more oomph in terms of coverage than something that's a level C recommendation. The other thing to note there is that they're not the only ones that are issuing recommendations for mammography. So for example, um, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, ACOG, they issue, uh, they issue guidance for this. So it, this is, there are multiple sources. This is a really important issue to a lot of different clinical groups. Uh, so that's why you'll see different folks parsing the evidence just slightly differently. Uh, but the, the key thing that everyone agrees on here is that everyone needs to be going out and getting their mammogram, particularly between those critical ages of 50 and 74. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we got a lot of questions about women under 40. You know, I didn't get the statistics. I know that colon cancer rates are really increasing for people under the age of 50 at, at really at an alarming, at an alarming rate. And I know that some young women are being diagnosed with breast cancer. So someone said on social media, please address women under 40 and how they can monitor dense breasts or figure out if they have them. Because the other thing I want to point out to our, our people who are watching this is that people with dense breasts do have a greater risk of being diagnosed with breast cancer. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that. So, I mean, just taking a step back, so you mentioned 45% of women have dense breasts. And what does that actually mean, right? So women on, on a mammogram, you can see whether the breast tissue is anywhere from really fatty through to this really dense the, you know, glandular fibrous tissue, right? right. And it's, a spectrum. Uh, you know, we say four categories, but the truth is that this is a spectrum. You can't, as you mentioned, you cannot tell on, uh, on just, just to touch your breast tissue, whether you have dense breasts or not. And also there are two reasons why it increases your risk of breast cancer. So number one is that masking effect that you talked about. So denser breast tissue can look light can look whitish on a mammogram, right? Unfortunately, so can cancerous lesions. So that's the reason why it's masking on those mammograms. And I just want to say, you know, one thing My sorry to interrupt, but I was just going to say my, my breast radiologist said, it's like trying to find a snowball against a backdrop, a field of snow. It can be really difficult to ascertain. Sorry to interrupt, continue. No, that's that's a great way of putting it. That's exactly right. Um, and then the other thing that we've come to learn over recent years is that dense breast tissue in and of itself, independent from that masking effect, does increase your risk of breast cancer. So it's important information to have. In terms of mammograms and where they give you your best benefit uh, in terms of identifying cancers early, it really is in between those ages of 50 and 74 
between under under 50 40 to 50 that's a conversation with your clinician right um some societies recommend everybody get routine mammography in between ages 40 and 50. below that age again there you're really getting into those age groups where the benefit of getting these regular mammograms the is not is is not as strong necessarily for everybody to go out and get them but that's something where you want to talk to your clinician because Let's say you have a really strong family history, particularly of early breast cancer. Guess what? They're probably going to tell you that you should move your your first mammogram up quite a bit. Yeah, and and uh, you know, but it's also important to point out that eighty five percent of breast cancer cases have no family history; they're sporadic cases. And so I think, unfortunately, people get lulled into this false sense of security by saying, "Oh, it's not my family; I'm not worried." And and you know, I think. I think it's a whole different discussion talking about younger people with cancer because, you know, my husband died of colon cancer when he was 42 and the screening at that time was 50, just recently lowered to 45. And I think at the time, 13,000 people under the age of 50 were diagnosed with colorectal cancer every year. And, you know, it's just, we've got to figure out some way, hopefully in the future, or maybe breast self exams or, or something that you want to make sure you do, you know, if you're under the age of 40, because that's when mammogram, the recommendation for mammograms is 40. Yeah, uh, it depends on the society that you're looking at. Some some do recommend from age 40. Some say it's a, cl a discussion with your clinician until age 50. Uh, but certainly in that range <laughs> is when you should be getting your first mammogram. And the most important thing is that people go out and get them, right? Um, yeah. Somebody at, was asking, asking about uh, Medicare not covering things like, um, well, someone says as of 10, 20, 22, Medicare does not pay for a bus. Is that what, how you pronounce it? I think they're talking about 3D imaging. Um, any thoughts on that? On uh, for uh, digital, digital. Uh, yeah. So um, I, that again, that's, that's something where the Medicare is not something that, uh, that we have purview over. Um, someone else said, do you know anything, actually, I've talked to a doctor about this, about something called a fast MRI. And I know my understanding, and Mar Dr. Marston, this is out of your area of ex expertise. You can just pass on it. But I, I have heard about clinical trials for fast MRIs that take less time and are less costly than sort of full MRIs. Do you know anything about that? So my the many things that we regulate, we regulate imaging technologies. Uh, so we're certainly always looking at the new technologies. We just want to make sure that, you know, the convenience that you get out of those doesn't sacrifice the quality of the images and the information that we're getting out of them. Um, you know, this doesn't go into effect until September of 2024. Why is that? Why is it taking so long to go into effect? Yeah, so anytime that we put out a new rule that's required nationwide, right, everybody has to do this. We just want to make sure that we're not disrupting the marketplace. We're not disrupting any of these facilities in the interest of getting this information out. Now, the important thing to emphasize here is that plenty of facilities, you mentioned 38 states, you're absolutely right, are requiring this information already. And plenty of facilities in those other states are already doing it. But we're just making sure that everybody across the nation has to do this. But we're, we don't want to disrupt and, and you know, make a mammogram unavailable to somebody when it should be available. So giving folks some time to phase it in. Yeah, and I think, I, you know, from I, I talk to a lot of people about this, as you can imagine. And I think the problem is, you know, the language is confusing. It's not clear. People are told your mammogram's fine, but by the way, you have dense breasts. And you're like, oh, my mammogram's fine. Oh, I have dense breasts. That's interesting. But they don't really have the knowledge or the information to ask their doctor, what does that mean? Do I need, you know, do I need additional testing? Um, you know, and and sometimes the communication isn't that good, even in, I think my doctor said in the state of New York, it's not even that good in terms of informing patients. So I think to have this uniform reporting policy and then to give people more information 
and on what that needs. Somebody asked if it's like, you know, you said one to four. So let's say someone comes in and they have level one or two. Their breasts are kind of dense, but not that dense. Will they be given different, somebody asked this question, different instructions and someone say who's on the denser, you know, range? Yeah. So the baseline, the basic information from your mammogram, whether a lesion was seen or whether a lesion was not seen, that's really not going to change all that much, right? What is going to change is whether you're told your breasts are dense or your breasts are not dense. So the women who are in those, those less dense categories are going to be told that their breasts are not dense, right? Um, or that doesn't, it shouldn't have. Less, What's that? Less, they're going to be told less dense, yes. not dense. Exactly. So th that doesn't mean that they're going to be told that they shouldn't have a conversation with their clinician. We would always recommend that you follow up on any testing with your clinician to talk through what it means. Uh, but this tees up that further conversation about that additional potential risk. So before I let you go, Dr. Marston, what should every person know when they're getting uh, when they go to get a mammogram. Someone says, I live in Ohio. I've been told I have dense breasts and a letter after my mammogram, but no further instructions. Mm. That's something that will change with these regulations. And if not, what next steps should I take? Yeah. So I guess what I want to encourage women to be proactive, that when they get their mammograms and get their mammogram results, they ask their clinician, their radiologist, their technician, do I have dense breasts, right? That's right. That's right. And the thing to remember is somebody ordered that test for you, right? That your clinician is responsible for that information. So it's not burdening them to follow up with these questions, right? Like that is their job. They should be having that conversation with you. So I would definitely recommend that folks do that. The other thing, you know, I think I know that this was relevant for, for your story is that so many women are behind on their health care, right? Um, the COVID pandemic, we fell behind on all sorts of our routine health care. And this is an opportunity to say, okay, it's time. I really need to go out and schedule that. So that's the most important message that we, sh we can get across. I also think, think that my doctor said, and because and, I was a little upset, I was like, why didn't anyone tell me? Like I, I forgot or my sense of time got screwed up during the pandemic. And generally what she has is people who come in for a mammogram, they make their appointment for the following year that day. Um, but I was talking to someone, a doctor for Hologic, and they invented the 3D mammogram. And she was saying that if you have actual people, not robocalls, calling and reminding people and really make it clear on websites what they need to do, that that women will go more regularly. But you're right, everyone who might be off schedule or put off your mammogram because of the pandemic through no fault of your own, because a lot of places were closed and you couldn't get a mammogram. But let's say you just you know, forgot like I did, or I just thought, oh wait, I've had one and I couldn't believe that I was six months late. Please, whatever you do, just make your appointment for your mammogram. And then when you go in and get tested, ask your doctor, do I have dense breasts? Is there anything I need to know? And if so, would you recommend additional screening? And our next step is the Find It Early Act, which will require insurance companies to cover additional screening for women with dense breasts if, if their clinician thinks that's advisable. Because it shouldn't be just women who can afford a breast ultrasound or an MRI, it should be available for all women, no matter what. And as I said this morning, I did a panel, Dr. Marston, and I said, if we spent as much attention and resources on women's health issues as we have on Viagra, a lot more women would be taken care of in our society. You don't have to comment on that. That's just me. <laughs> That's my very old comment for the day. But um, Dr. Marston, thank you. Please thank uh, Jim in your communications office. Tell him I so appreciate him reaching out to me because I know he knew this was an issue I care deeply about. And I feel like there's a real information gap yeah. for women there who don't understand that, you know, their breast cancer sadly could be missed if they have dense breasts and that they really need to be sort of their own advocates. And until we change the system. And obviously this FDA policy, this new FDA policy is a start. 
So thank you for explaining it. Is there anything I left out of this conversation that you think would be helpful? Look, I'm a public health professional. You've been a public health warrior for a, a long time now. And I just want to express my appreciation for everything that you're doing to get these important messages out. Oh, thank you, Dr. Marston. That's so nice of you. And, and today I'm doing breast cancer, but March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month. So I'm going to be talking to people about screening for colon cancer, the number two cancer killer of men and women combined. Some 52,000 people diagnosed every year, but so preventable if you're screened and the age is 45, we're, we're gonna have a whole conversation about that before the month is over. But in the meantime, I know you stayed late today. Thank you so much, Dr. Marston. I hope you have a great weekend and really appreciate your insights for us. Thank you so much. Okay, bye everyone. Go get your mammograms. <laughs>